Madam President. The Senator from West Virginia. Thank you, Madam President. And I thank my uh, colleague from Missouri, uh, Senator Blunt, for his his leadership on this issue. We had the hearing in uh, the markup in, in the Rules Committee. And uh, I think that we could tell from the debate that uh, the amount of um, holes and uh, misinformation that's con contained within S-1 uh, is, is the reason that I call it the so-called For the People Act. Ronald Reagan famously said the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Well, this can be applied to many examples of what we do here. What seems more pertinent, I think, now is this latest partisan attempt to federalize one of America's most sacred functions, and that's our elections. Advocates claim that this sweeping effort which comes in the form of legislation ironically called For the People Act is to get more people to vote. Well, let's be clear. Everyone, Republicans, Democrats, independents, we all want to see more people voting. And the good news is that we've already been doing that across the country and in my home state of West Virginia. Remember, last year we were voting under a pandemic, under incredibly difficult situations for everybody. Our state of West Virginia very, ran a very successful election suited to our state. We had thousands more people vote in 2020 than they did in 2016. In fact, the total number of ballots cast in 2020 was more than any other election in West Virginia's history, with the exception of the 1960s election, 1960 election, and remember that was the presidential election that President Kennedy won after he had a very successful and, and um, a pivotal victory in the primary in West Virginia as the first Roman Catholic running for president. More than 158 million ballots were cast in 2020. That's a 7% increase since 2016. This is under a pandemic. Every state decided the best way to get the maximum partic participation. Last November, every single state saw higher turnout rates compared to the previous presidential election. So if more people are in fact voting, what is this Democrat pr proposed legislation really about? And that is where it's about the federalization of elections and election power grab. And I believe it lacks credibility. It's really about a way to implement absurd and downright un-American provisions in the bill that prioritize power over the will of the people. And I'm glad to say that some of my Democrat colleagues are finally acknowledging the concerns with this bill. During the Rules Committee markup, Republicans and Democrats offered a number of amendments, some of which were adopted on a bipartisan basis. That's what we're supposed to do, work it through committee. These amendments have been heralded by some of my Democrat colleagues as an example of how we can work together on this issue. Despite this, bipartisan amendments in the Rules Committee, despite this, the version that the majority leader may bring up for a vote does not include any of the amendments that were adopted during the markup, even though they had bipartisan support. To me, that is a clear sign that the majority is not trying to cooperate in good faith, but rather trying to ram through a partisan bill that will encroach on the state's abilities, my state's ability, to ensure a free and fair election and a well-attended election at the, at the same time. The legislation would strip states of their constitutional authority to run elections and allow the federal government to determine what's best. It would ban voter ID laws, which are adopted in many states, mine included, which maintain the integrity of elections in my state and a majority of others. And quite frankly, I haven't heard one person in my state complain about having to take an ID to the polls or to submit an ID for their, with their vote. The bill would also force states to administer same-day voter registration, a cumbersome mandate that many states wouldn't be able to comply with for dozens of reasons. My state, internet connectivity. Many of our uh, polling areas wouldn't be able to accept uh, same-day registration because they can't connect, uh, unfortunately, to, to the, the bigger system to find out if this person is fraudulent or not. 
would also require that states mandate the unpopular and dangerous practice of ballot harvesting, which is ripe for fraud. Now, I'll tell you, some states have made ballot harvesting legal. Some states have same-day voter registration. Good for them. They've decided what's good for their state through the constitutional duty of states to run elections. Speaking of fraud, this, this bill would mandate absentee ballot boxes, drop boxes, and force county clerks to accept regular ballots filed in the wrong precinct without proof of residency, both of which leave the door open for voter fraud. And if that's not enough, if signed into law, West Virginia's e-voting system and others like it, this is the e-voting system that allows our, veteran, our military, active military who are um, deployed overseas to be able to vote safely by, mobile, by their mobile phone, and the legislature opened that up to people with disabilities to be able to use an e-voting system, this bill would severely curtail that and, and, and negate it in many cases. That's an expansion of voting rights that this bill would take away. This legislation would allow government funding of congressional campaigns with small donations being matched with federal funds. Now, we've heard our friend Senator Cruz is in our committee. He talked about if his contributions were matched for the first three months of this year, he would get millions of dollars, over $20 million of public financing for his campaign. Why, I highly doubt my Democrat colleagues would want to, the federal government uh, to help Senator Cruz in his financing of his campaign. And as a matter of fact, he himself, Senator Cruz said, he doesn't want that at all either. The, the bill also would make the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission, which oversees our elections and our finances, uh, which is now a neutral three Republicans, three Democrats on the commission, as it always has been, it would make it into a partisan um, majority vote. Well, if you're going to be making decisions on my colleague from Florida's election or my elections from, uh, from uh, financials or, Madam President, your elections, do we really want a political organization making those? Not when we've had a nonpartisan FEC for years and uh, have enforced our campaign uh, laws and put it above party politics. But remember, this is only about getting people to vote. So don't worry. The disaster doesn't stop with politicizing the FEC. It would also remove the authority of states to, to uh, draw district maps and would mandate how you do that. Our states can figure out how best. Some of them have commissions. Some of them do them by the legislature. Some of them do them by the Supreme Court. Let's let the, let's let the states make that decision. So I, I just think that uh, the, the, the biggest um, demonstration of opposition to this bill has come from uh, the West Virginia County Clerks Association. They adopted a resolution in opposition to S-1 that 54 of the 55 county clerks in my state signed. These are Republican and Democrat county clerks. And I would ask, Madam President, if I could submit that letter uh, for the record, please. Without objection. Thank you. They raise, they raise numerous grievances, many of which I have talked about. They talk about the voting machines that they have right now that they've spent a lot of money on. They'd all be uh, taken offline. You'd have to fully replace all of that. And they fully reject what is their – they fully reject the usurping of what is their constitutionally based responsibility to run elections safely, securely, and on time. So I appreciate the letter from our clerks and certainly understands their deep, deep concerns. The right to vote is a constitutional right, and on that we are in agreement. I got to go to a uh, citizenship uh, where 20 new citizens joined, uh, joined our country, waiting to get into our country, but also to become a citizen. And the best right and the most precious right they get is that right to vote. But S-1 is a merely a a partisan power grab that includes all kinds of unrelated harmful uh, provisions. It strips the states of their authority to run their elections. To put it simply, the states do not need the federal government to strip them of their authority and impose burdensome requirements to fix problems that do not exist. And that's exactly what this bill does. And it's why, for the People Act, does not live up to its name. Thank you.